This is News 252 and I'm Sally Sells. In today's first story, the people of Rochester, New York are wondering, why hasn't winter stopped yet? Oh, hold on. Breaking news coming in right now. The protein, beta-2 microglobulin, is currently being worked on in the University of Rochester. We have April Ann on the scene, but before we go to her, let me give you some background on this incredible protein. Beta-2 microglobulin is a protein on the major histocompatibility complex, 1, also known as MHC1. B2M forms the light chain on the complex. MHC1, shown in the artist's renditions here, has a heavy alpha chain and light beta-2 microglobulin chain. Beta-2M binds to the alpha-3 heavy chain of MHC1 via non-covalent interactions. These non-covalent interactions occur between tryptophan-60 of the beta-2M and the alpha chain. This tryptophan molecule can be seen at the bottom of this ribbon diagram. B2M, shown here in two different videos, is a protein consisting of 99 amino acids that form seven anti-parallel beta strands. These beta strands form a sandwich on each side. One side of the protein has three beta strands, the other side has four. The two sides of the sandwich are held together by disulfide bonds. This structure makes a part of the immunoglobulin family. These immunoglobulin domains can be found in antibodies. Both the relationship to MHC1 and the immunoglobulin structure resemble antibody complexes. This structure is advantageous for attaching antigens and other molecules to the cell. B2M is on the outside of antigen-presenting cells, or APCs. It helps put molecules on the surface of every nucleated cell in the body. This main function of B2M allows for T cells to check for infection. For this reason, it is considered an important molecule for our immune system. Now that you have some context, let's go to April, who's at the University of Rochester now. Thanks, Sally. Like you said, B2M is being researched at the University of Rochester right now. I'm here outside of their library. This protein was initially discovered in the urine of cadmium poisoned patients. Since then, it has become a protein of interest in many diseases. Although it helps us fight disease by activating T cells similarly to how antibodies activate them, it also is the cause of other diseases such as kidney failure and Alzheimer's. When B2M functions normally, it helps the body, but when denatured, things become messy. The beta strands of B2M can easily be denatured when the pH is outside of the protein's native range. When denatured, an aggregating prone region of B2M is exposed. Copper ions can also cause this aggregation by turning histidine 31 and proline 32 bond from a cis to trans conformation. Unfortunately, like you said earlier, Sally, there is a tryptophan at the end of beta-2 microglobulin. If there is a high concentration of B2M, then the molecules not attached to MHC1 can unfold due to the unstable tryptophan 60. These aggregations and the diseases resulting from the aggregations are the most interesting part of B2M. Most research being performed on this campus involves these aggregates. Previously published research shows hemodialysis patients often have aggregates in their urine and their kidneys. Quite disgusting. Some research being worked on currently involves how to reduce these amyloid aggregates from building up to help these patients. Other recent research shows that B2M levels are elevated in melanoma patients, and now we want to know why. Could this research lead to a cure for this aggressive cancer? No one knows, but we sure hope so. Because common aggregates sometimes form scar tissue, it is of no surprise that some research on the aggregates involves how beta-2 microglobulin forms scar tissue in biological tissue damage cases, such as repairing tissues after organ transplants. Another interesting find is that increased B2M levels results in premature aging, and thus diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia, and maybe even some wrinkles. This is because the B2M forms stable oligomers. Thanks to this protein, we are learning so much about many life-threatening diseases, and I'm so excited to be on the campus where this historic research is being done. Back to you, Sally. Wow, April. I'm so glad that we got to be present for this amazing news. After the commercial break, we'll be back to the fake news. Thanks for watching. I'm Sally Sells, and this is News 252.